It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's schools where we uh, test scientific literacy and we invite you to test your own and play along with our two outstanding teams today. We welcome today two teams, one from Longfields Elementary and the other from Perrywood Elementary School. We start the teams out with 50 points, no penalties for incorrect answers. And at the end of the game, we'll tell you who goes on to the next part of our competition. And this is our 36th year of competition. Let's meet that team from Longfields and get started our, with our game. Would you please say hello to Hannah? Hey, Hannah, would you wave to everybody? She is the captain, fifth grader, joined by two fourth graders. Hey, Grayson, wave to the audience if you would. Thank you, Grayson. And rounding out that team, another fourth grader is Nathan. Hey, Nathan, good to have you on the bowl. All right, good luck to you, Longfields. Let's get started. We have six categories of questions. We start with the green things category. We have three questions for you, one worth five points, one worth 15, one worth 25. Here is that five-point question. Here we go. Good luck. You probably know that plant at Christmas, the poinsettia plant that is red. The familiar Christmas poinsettia plant's flowers appear to have red petals, but the red parts are not petals. They're a kind of leaf. The real flowers on the poinsettia are at the very center of the bracts, and they are this color, the Y, in Roy G. Biv. Yellow. Yellow, that's right. They are yellow flowers. They're kind of inconspicuous there. Good start. Five points. Keep it up for 15 points. The stored food in a seed that the seed uses for germination and keeping the young embryo alive is this carbohydrate, a polysaccharide often associated with potatoes. If you eat potatoes, you're eating this kind of carbohydrate. Can you name it? Begins with the letter S. Um, I feel like I feel like it's kind of like salt. What do you guys think of sodium? I uh, know it can't be sodium because I'm not sure salt is a carbohydrate. Um, maybe it's. Mm -hmm. Yes, salt and sodium, you're absolutely correct. Those are, those are not oh. carbohydrates, either of them. Uh, potatoes contain starch, starch. Oh. The other carbohydrate is sugar. Starch and sugar are the ones that we but, uh, usually associate with the word carbohydrate. Let's get this last one. For 25 points, a plant called duckweed would be ideal to be grown in space because it contains the most concentrated amount of this bodybuilding nutrient in the plant world, when we eat plants, when we eat meat, when we eat anything, we need some of this bodybuilding nutrient to keep ourselves going. Can you name it? Could it be herbs? Um, is it saliva? I know sometimes if you look at the side of a food where the label is, it tells you how much fat is in there, how much carbohydrate, and then it also tells you how much protein is in there. Protein is the answer. That's what you can use to build up your muscles and keep your body going. Let's go to the zoo. I know you'll do better. Let's look at a picture for the five-point question in Zoo Parade. Now, this bird, you might have seen one around here. It's called a cowbird. A cowbird is what we call a deadbeat parent. Listen to this, because it lays its eggs in other birds' nests, so it gives up parenting completely. It's a behavior that we describe by this P-initialed word, P as in Paul, the same one that we give to leeches, ticks, and tapeworms. They are all the same kinds of creatures as this cowbird is. I know it has something to do with parasite. Something to do with what? Sooter. 
parent. I have something to do with parent. You have any you know idea, you... Hannah? Um, no, no. You know, a leech and a tick and a tapeworm and a cup. They're all parasites. They're all parasites. They're making their livings off something else. So that cow bird, when it leaves its eggs, the other bird whose nest it is sits on them and hatches a cow bird chick. And that cow bird chick is bigger than the other ones, and it literally pushes the other birds out, and the parents oftentimes don't recognize that bird is not their own. So it's a parasite. Let's go to 15 points. In Asia, there's a flower called the corpse flower. A corpse is a dead body. When that flower blooms, it stinks. It smells like something is decaying, like something you left in the refrigerator too long. The flower does this because it's trying to attract what kind of creatures to pollinate it? Flies. Flies, absolutely right. Something that stinks, draws flies. Thank you, Nathan, you were right on that. You got your 15 points. Give yourselves a pat on the back. You're on your way. Let's go. Let's get the next one. Zoo for 25. Birds that migrate, fish that migrate, insects that migrate. They don't get lost, and yet they don't have a GPS. How can they find their way without maps and a GPS? They rely on this field, this M-initialed field that surrounds the Earth that helps them to find where they're going. What kind of um, M-initialed field surrounds the Earth that helps in telling direction? I'm sure to go magnetic field. You got it, young man. It is the magnetic field. Thank you, Nathan. Nathan, you are the, you're the man. You're keeping it going here. Let's go to the body systems. Got three more points before we take our first break. For five points. These facial features that are also found on golf balls and in the bubble wrap inspired game Pop It are these things. What are these little dents? on our face called? Dimples. Absolutely, those are your dimples. And golf balls are dimpled. And that bubble wrap game Pop It also has dimples. Good. Body systems for 15 points. If your teacher, if Miss Bear, gave you a model of a part of the body, and that model contained, had tarsals, T-A-R-S-A-L-S, metatarsals, and phalanges, you would be looking at a model of a human what? Body? No. It's, I'm, looking, I'm asking for a particular part of the body. What part of the body has those different areas? Tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. You'd be looking at a human what? Your brain? Brain. That's a good try. You're going to be looking at a human foot. A foot. Because you've got metatarsals and tarsals. There are more bones in your feet than anywhere else in your body. Why? Because you're putting all your weight on there. You need a lot of support down there. Tarsal is a word you should always associate with foot. Carpal, C-A-R-P-A-L, is what you associate with the wrist. Just remember that. Here's your last question before we take our first break. If you smell your breath, and it smells like nail polish remover, that's not a good sign because that chemical is called acetone. It means you could be suffering from this disease caused by problems with insulin. Diabetes? It is diabetes, absolutely right. There's so many commercials on television about that. You got that 25-point question. That's a lot of points. Feel good about that. So that means you have 125 points. You did good. Keep it up in the second half. I'll see you guys in just a few moments. All right. It is now time to meet that team from Perrywood. Would you please say hello to Caleb, my fifth grader. Hey, Caleb, he's our captain. Joined by two fourth graders, Markia. Hey, Markia, wave to everybody at home, please. And Xavier, Xavier, good to have you on the show as well. All right, here we go. Let's go into the green things category. These are the plant question. Here's the question for five points. Some fungus, like mushroom, glow green at night, like that green behind you guys. 
They attract male beetles oftentimes in search of mates. But that mushroom is clever. It wants that beetle to come there, just like a flower wants a bee to come to it, because it wants the male beetles to pick up these. There are not pollen grains in a fungus, but rather grains of these S-initialed objects. How does the fungus reproduce? It has to spread these that the beetle helps it do. What do you think? I think it is. I think the S initial is probably sodium. You know, I know you've heard of these before, spores. Spores, S-P-O-R-E-S, -E spores. And you know, sometimes in houses we get fungus, you get uh, uh, mold growing on the walls, and, and it's not good. That's a fungus, and it produces spores, and that's how it reproduces. All right, let's go to green things for 15 points. See if you can get this one. You know, insects, like us, sometimes get parasites. And we take medicine to get rid of parasites. And, you know, sometimes insects are eaten by other insects or birds, predators, because they taste good. Well, to make themselves safe from parasites and not very tasty to predators, some insects eat chemicals that have this kind of repellent taste, bad taste. Think of the basic tastes that you can taste and tell me the one that is the one that, oof, you want to spit out if you taste something that tastes like that. Think about the basic tastes. There are four basic tastes. Give me the one that oftentimes is repellent. Ugh, awful. I know you've heard of them. I think it's... And sometimes they like stinks. Yeah, I think I agree with Markia. Markia, what you say? Is it poop? You know, there are four basic tastes. Sweet, salty, sour, like a lemon, and bitter. Bitter is the one that tastes off. That's the one that normally you spit it back out. It's a warning to you that it could be poisonous. Bitter was the answer there. All right, let's go to 25 points. Peanuts, which are not nuts at all, are better, de better described by this L-initialed word, a group of plants that can pull the important element nitrogen from the air. A peanut is what kind of L initial food? Those are called legumes. Legumes. L E G U M E S. Legumes. Even though they're called nuts, they're not really that. Let's go to the zoo. Let's see if you know your animals. I know you do. For five points in the zoo, it's been discovered that freshwater eels, eels are long fish, oftentimes they're electric. Yeah, they can produce electricity. It's been found that freshwater eels aren't solitary hunters. They don't hunt their prey by themselves. Rather, they hunt in these units just like wolves do. If you have a group of wolves, a pack of wolves, that's it. Good, five points. Yes, indeed. A pack of eels and a pack of wolves. Good, I like that. For 15 points. A paleontologist, someone who looks at things from many, many years ago, estimated that what she found was 890 million years old, the remains of this invertebrate of the class Porifera, a creature used today to soak up spills around the house. Sponge. Sponge is right. Good. Two in a row. You got the packs. You got packs. You got the sponge. Let's go for 25 points in the zoo. Let's show you a picture. Come on, Perrywood. Let's get it. It's been discovered that this largest of all of our vultures, a bird on the edge of extinction, can reproduce parthenogenetically, meaning no males are needed. Name this kind of vulture 
that is the largest winged bird in America on the verge of extinction. Can you do it? I think it's a turkey vulture. I, a turkey vulture? Yeah, I think it, it's it, a it sure looks like a turkey vulture. It's kind of a turkey vulture on steroids, even much, much bigger. It's called a condor, C-O-N-D-O-R, a California condor. Uh, many of them died out because they are scavengers and they were eating dead animals that had been shot by hunters and the bullets were made of lead and the birds were dying of lead poisoning. So it's been a, a struggle to get them to come back. Let's go to the body. Five points. It is said that these sense organs are the windows to your soul. Your nose. I hear nose. Your Anybody ears? else? The I think it's your ears. I hear ears. The windows to your I soul. I hear eyes. I hear nose. I hear ears. I, I hear eyes. eyes. I think it's eyes. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to Caleb. Last word, Caleb. I think it's eyes. It is eyes. You got it, young man. Perfect. 15 points in body. These body parts, of which you have 206 of them, can follow the words bear, bear something, and brittle something. Bones. Bones is right. Bare bones and brittle bones. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Last question before we take our break. See, you guys, you're, getting, you're hitting your stride here. Laxatives that help relieve constipation, work through this O initial process that draws water into your large intestine, and thus it makes it easier to poop. Name that O initial process that can draw water from one area to another. You guys have any ideas? I've heard of it. I just can't remember where. That's a tough question. That's a tough question. Sometimes people use this word. They think that, you know, if you go to sleep with a textbook, you're going to learn what's in the textbook because it's just going to seep in on its own by a process of called osmosis. Osmosis was that O initial uh, process we were looking for there. Okay, you have 90 points after this first round of nine questions. That's not bad. You did a nice job in the first round here. We'll see you guys in just a couple of minutes. Good work. It's time to welcome back that team from Longfields, and let's find out about our players before we ask their last nine questions. Let's go and talk to their captain, Hannah. Hannah, nice to have you on the show today, and I was just complimenting all you guys about those beautiful shirts, and Miss Bear designed those for you. Miss Bear is just a wonderful coach, and uh, uh, not too many years ago, she was selected as one of the nominees for Teacher of the Year of Prince George's County Ooh. out of thousands and thousands of teachers. So... Uh, I know you're proud of her, and she's just a terrific, terrific person. And uh, she's been with our show for a number of years here. Hannah, tell me about yourself. What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, usually, I just, I like to do, like, science experiments. I also like to just practice my math facts, and I also like to watch YouTube sometimes. Wonderful. All great things, and uh, I can tell you're a great student. Have you thought about the future? What kind of career are you thinking about, if you are? Um, I think I, I want to be a chef or a teacher. Wow. Well, we, we dearly need teachers, and I, I can tell by your, your personality you would be a good teacher and a chef as well. Do you have a famous dish that you like? What do you like to cook if you could cook anything? What do you cook? I like to cook mac and cheese, and I also like to cook cheesecake. Whoa, there's no argument there. They're both really tasty. You know, you can do both. You can be a teacher and a great chef. Maybe have a, a cooking show someday. Doing a nice job. Keep it up. Let's talk to your teammates here. Let's talk to Grayson. Hey, Grayson, why did you want to be on the Science Bowl today? Uh, I, I just thought it would be a fun thing to do, honestly. Yeah, well, we hope you're having some fun. And uh, tell me about the science that you know. How did you prepare? How do you know so much science? Um, well, I, lo I love doing, like, mini experiments with my dad. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just one of the things I've been interested in. That's great. It'll serve you well. And have you thought about a career yourself? Yeah, I would like to join the Navy. 
Wonderful. Well, serving the country is always a, a great thing. It's a patriotic thing to do, too. Maybe it's a, um, a stepping stone to a career, too. Who knows what they would offer you or what advantages you would have, opportunities. Let's talk to your other teammate, Nathan. Hey, Nathan. Nice Hello. to have you on the show. And you certainly have a lot of science knowledge. And you have confidence, too. And you're just a, a fourth grader. Tell us how you come by all your science knowledge. Um, well, I just like science, and I'm I'm a, I'm a help um save animals from going extinct when I grow up. Wow. Well, that sounds like a wonderful career for you. And, you know, just in the fourth grade, you have a lot of school ahead of you here. And I hope you keep this same discipline and this same sense of curiosity because you're a really impressive young man. All right, Longfields, it is now time for your last nine questions. Let's go to the let's get physical category. And if you're ready, here we go for five points. This force, which on the moon is just one sixth that on Earth, and one-third on Mars was said to suck by one astronaut who hated coming home. Gravity. Gravity. G gravity. Yeah, he said gravity sucked. Yeah, because he, he just loved floating around out there. Good answer. 15 answer points. 15 points. A new book called This Is Your Mind on Plants talks about familiar plant-produced drugs like opium, mescaline, and this one found in tea and coffee and chocolate. Cocoa. Um, yeah, vanilla cocoa. Mm. No, the, the drug that we're looking for is caffeine. Caffeine is in tea and coffee and chocolate. All right, caffeine. That's the, it's a stimulant, which is why people, you know, you probably have people in your family, they can't, you can't even talk to them until they've had their coffee in the morning to get their, their jolt of caffeine. Let's go to 25 points. Let's get physical. This rock is soft enough to be sprinkled on a baby's bottom. It comes salt? in a powdered, comes in a powdered form. Salt? If you have a baby brother or sister at home, you might have seen mom or dad or someone sprinkling, sprinkling talcum powder, T-A-L-C. Talcum powder is a rock, it's a mineral, and it's soft enough to be on a baby's bottom and to prevent rash. Uh, does a good job. Let's go to potpourri for five points, and uh, here we go. One cubic centimeter is the same as one milliliter. The only difference is one measures this in a solid and the other in a liquid. What do they measure? Volume, density, or mass? A cubic centimeter in a solid, a milliliter in a liquid, both measure what same thing? Only difference is one isn't a solid, one isn't a gas. Is it volume, density, or mass? Volume, I think. Um, let's go with volume. 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 Ah, correct answer there was volume. Volume, absolutely like, right, like a graduated cylinder has milliliters in it, measures volume. And cubic centimeters is what we use for solids for determining volume. All right, for 15 points in potpourri. The reason the Delta variant of COVID was so much more infectious than the Alpha strain is that a person with Delta had over a thousand times as much of this in their bodies as the people who had the alpha strain. What was in their Giants. bodies? Giants. Not, give me a different name. Microbes. COVID-19? Okay, I, I need a specific name of these so-called germs you're telling me. Bacteria? Bacteria? Um, we're gonna go with bacteria. Bacteria, okay. It's actually virus, virus. You know, it is the coronavirus. In fact, that's what C-O-V-I-D stands for, coronavirus disease. So virus was what we were looking for. All right, let's get this 25-pointer. There's a picture with it, kind of a scary picture. 
I don't think I've ever seen one of these in real life, but the picture is, is good enough. If you were a predator, if you were a bird, and you saw this moth, you'd run the other way. It's called a death head moth. If you look, you'll see the markings on its head, which resembles what's found on a pirate flag, a skull and crossbones. The crossbones are two thigh bones, otherwise known as these. Another name for your thigh bones. Cow? No, no, that, that's the muscle. Um, well, like, since, like, it's the largest bone in your body, you got, what are you talking about, like, a femur or something? You got it. You got it. When you said longest bones in the body, femur it is. Who said femur? Thank uh, you, Nathan. Femur got you 25 points. You needed those points. Thank you much. Let's go to Dateline for five points. This character on Sesame Street, who has forever been six years old, complained only of a sore wing after he got his coronavirus vaccination. Big Bird? Big Bird, yeah. He's the eternal six-year-old. And to demonstrate that vaccination is safe, he got his, he said, oh, I just got a sore wing. Good, five more points. Let's go to 15 in Dateline. Two more questions for you guys. The U.S. government strived to produce a COVID vaccine. Remember, there was no vaccine for a long time. That's why we were so scared. It was named after a Star Trek term for speeds that are faster than the speed of light. It was called Operation What Speed? What W initialed word will define the kind of speed that we went at to make sure these vaccines were produced in record amounts of time? Operation What Speed? War Speed? Say it again. War Speed. I'm not quite sure. I, spell War, it for speed. me. Warp speed it is. That's what I want to hear. Yes, 15 points. All right. I knew it was in there somewhere. Thank you, Grayson, too. Grayson, you look like I'm, I'm glad you're into it. Glad you got it. Last question of the game. Dateline 25. NASA's Dragonfly mission has focused on this largest moon of Saturn. Thought to be very much like Earth, but its rain is actually the liquefied gas methane, which is very, very smelly. For 25 points, name this T initialed largest moon of Saturn, which is actually uh, the second largest in the entire solar system. Titron? Welcome. Help him out. Not, not quite. Um, Titan? Titan, Titan okay. is exactly right. Yes, Titan, not Titron. Titan, good comeback there. You got yourself 25 points, which means you end the game with 200 points, Longfields. That is a great game. Let's see if that wins it for you. We'll see you back here in a couple minutes. Congratulations. It's now time to welcome back that team from Perrywood, and let's meet these outstanding young people. Let's go first to the captain, and that is Caleb. Hey, Caleb, nice to have you here today. They chose well in making you the captain. You know an awful lot of science. Uh, tell me how you guys prepared to be on the science bowl. Well, we watched previous science bowls. I studied in different books and watched other different videos. Well, it's all paying off for you because you're a very talented young man. You know your science. Tell me, what is it you hope to do? Do you hope to go into a scientific career someday? Or, or if not, what would you like to do? I actually want to become a professional basketball player. Well, that's a, that's a wonderful ambition. And if you, uh, if you have the natural athletic abilities, uh, we're all envious of you. Go out there and do what you love. And then after your basketball career is over, because you can't do that all your life, maybe you have a fallback. Maybe you'll do something else and uh, um, just keep up your, your discipline, your academics and your athletics. You're doing a nice job here today. Let's find out about your teammates. Let's go to Marquia. Hey, Marquia, good to have you on the show today. I know it's your first time here. I hope you're having some fun, Marquia. Are you having some fun? Yes. Yeah, it's a little scary though. Here's this, this guy throwing all these words at you and expecting you to just kind of boom, 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 pull them out. Uh, you're, I know you're just in the, uh, you're, are you a fourth grader? Is that right, or a fifth grader? I'm a fifth grader. 
fifth grader, yeah, it's still very young, but uh, you know, accumulating science knowledge takes years and years and years. Uh, what do you do in your spare time, Marquia? I like to do art. Wonderful, wonderful. A, a creative expression. And what is it about science that you like? I like to know how things work and how you could change them, matter, and I like to, I like to study matter and the atmosphere and all the planets. Absolutely. There's so much we don't know. We think now that kind of everything's been known, you know, the uh, but we've really just scratched the surface. There's so many things still yet to be solved. And uh, so keep that curiosity. I like that. What do you want to do someday? I want to be, I want to become an artist. Yeah, well, would you, uh, do you like to work with uh, a sculpt? Do you sculpt or do you paint? Or what kind of art do you like? I do abstract art. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that someday. And you're doing such a nice job here today. Keep it up. Let's talk to your last teammate here. Let's talk to Xavier. Hey, Xavier. Good to have you on the show today. Why did you want to do this? I wanted, I wanted to join the science bowl. I wanted to join the science bowl because it was fun. And I like science and especially the science. Wow. Well, we're glad you're here. We're like, we like that you like science, that you wanted to do this with us today. And like I said, we hope you have fun doing this. We hope to learn from you some of the science you know, but I hope you're taking some science along with you that we're teaching you a bit as well as we go along. You're doing a nice job here. What do you want to do someday, young man? Someday I would like to become an astronomer. Wow, wow. I know your teammate Marquia is interested in space as well, so uh, may stay in touch with her and get yourself a telescope. You know, ask Santa for one, <laughs> whatever, whenever you have a chance. All right. You're sitting at 90 points. Let's do your last nine questions here. Give it your all here, Perrywood. Let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. It's a multiple choice. You know, if you're making hard-boiled eggs, you've got to boil some water. Well, when you heat that water, it is an example, a perfect example, of hot water rising from the bottom of the pot, gets to the top, cools a bit, falls back down, reheats and rises again. It goes in this cycle. Is that process known as convection, conduction, or radiation? What kind of heat movement is that when you see water heating, cooling, and falling, and cycling around? Convection, conduction, or radiation? I know it's not conduction. I think it's convection. Go for it, Caleb. What you want? Radiation. Uh, it's the first one. Convection. Convection, yeah. And warm air rises just like that warm water. That's why you see buzzards, turkey vultures, and all. They wait until it gets warm during the day and the, war, the warm air rises and that's what makes it easier for them to fly. Let's go to 15 points. The new James Webb Telescope, which replaces the Hubble Space Telescope, will see the universe through this kind of eye-initialed light that we don't see. We detect it as heat. Do I have any ideas? I initialed kind of light out there in the universe as part of uh, what they call the electromagnetic spectrum. You know, you've got visible light out there that we can see, but then there's this kind of I initialed light that we can't see, but we perceive it as heat. I think I've heard of it. Maybe you've heard of infrared, infrared, Gee. IR. That's what we were looking for there, infrared light. Okay. For 25 points, uh, we have a future basketball player out there, Caleb. And Caleb, if you are playing basketball, you are going to sweat. And after you've been sweating for an hour or so, if later you notice that the sweat has dried and there's a white substance on your skin, don't be alarmed. You know that you're running low. It tells you you're running low on these e initial kind of chemicals like sodium and potassium that are essential for your proper body functions. That's why you drink Gatorade. That's why you have to take some 
salt water because you're trying to replace these E initial kinds of substances. Big word. Uh, You've probably heard of electrolytes. Electrolytes. Electrolytes are the things that you're losing. You've got to replace if you're sweating a lot. All right, you can get these next ones. I know you will. Potpourri for five points. Bees. Bees go buzzing around all the time. They're a lot more like us than we realize. They have segmented legs of six parts, like, but like our legs, between their femur and their tibia, there is this joint. It's a hairy one. It looks so big because it's where the bees store the pollen they're picking up from the flowers. What is that joint between your femur and your tibia? Same thing found in bees. The bees what? Knee? Is it knee? It's right. The bee's knees. Absolutely right. Good answer. You sometimes are hesitant, but you're coming up with the right answer. So, yeah, I, I can understand your reluctance. Don't be, be afraid to say something, but knees is correct. You got yourself the five points. Let's go to 15 points. If you wear jeans, blue jeans, blue jeans get their color from this I initialed dye that comes from a plant in the pea family and is the next to the last color in the visible spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, blank, violet. What is that I initialed color dye? Indigo. Indigo, Indigo. Indigo is right. Good. 15 points. Way to do it. Good work. 25 points in potpourri. Your body contains a number of juices. We're not talking about orange juice and grapefruit juice, some natural juices like saliva in your mouth, pancreatic juice in your pancreas, bile juice from your gallbladder, intestinal juice, and this G initial juice in your stomach made up of acid and an enzyme called pepsin. Name that kind of G initial juice found in your stomach. This is an adjective that refers to things, all things stomach. Gluten? Glute, yeah, gluten is something, you know, it's found in wheat. That is a G initial term. This is called gastric juice, gastric juice. Gastric, like if you have uh, gastritis, that's another name for an upset stomach. Remember that, G-A-S-T-R-I-C. Gastric always refers to something digestive or in the stomach. All right, let's go to Dateline for five points. On Veterans Day, President Biden said, our armed forces are so important to our country that they are like this body part, the part that makes us vertebrates. Backbone. 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 The armed forces are the backbone, the spine of the country. It's a good metaphor there. Good. I'm glad you got that answer. Let's go to 15 points. I have a picture for you. This is a famous picture. First man on the moon. NASA has just named one of its facilities in Ohio for this Ohio man who flew to the moon in 1969 and became the first person to set foot there. This yeah. is one small... It is Neil Armstrong. You got it. Perfect. Perfect. Last question of the game. Let's get these 25 points. Let's go out with a bang here. Because she died before the Nobel Prizes were awarded, a woman by the name of Rosalind Franklin did not share the prize, the Nobel Prize in Medicine, that was won by James Watson and Francis Crick for their discovery of this famous molecule that makes us who we are. Genes. Genes. More, be more specific. Name the chemical in the genes. DNA. You got it. DNA is what we want to hear. Perfect. Well done. Which means you end the game with 155 points. Nicely done, Perry Wood. Congratulations. Well, we hope you enjoyed this game today. It was back and forth. And the students, yes, they were quiet. They were a bit shy. But uh, that was not what they really were. They knew their science. And you heard, you saw them come up with those wonderful answers. We're proud of all of our players, the six that we see, saw, and the alternates as well. 
So congratulations to Hannah and Grayson and Nathan from Longfield and Mason and Destiny, their two alternates. Miss Bear is here, their wonderful sponsor, and Miss Bell, their equally wonderful principal. Congratulations to, to Caleb and Marquia and Xavier for a great game. And their principals here, Miss Poole, and their wonderful coach who's been with us for many, many years, Miss Henson. She always does great work. Our final tally today, it was a close game. Perrywood 155, Longfield 200. So Longfield's congratulations. We will see you against University Park in the next game. And let's have a nice round of applause for everybody. Even though we can't hear you out there, we can see how proud you are of yourselves. You brought honor and pride to yourselves and your families and your schools. And uh, it takes courage to do this. You stepped up and you did it well. I hope you enjoyed today's game. Until next time, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye now for everybody here on Science Bowl. See you. Bye-bye.